Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bowling Podcast and welcome to Underworld Starting Rosters. We're doing a series of videos looking at the rosters that have been released for Blood Bowl 2020, uh, preparing you for leagues. So we're talking through just what you can buy for 1 million ready for your Blood Bowl leagues for Blood Bowl 2020. And Underworld are a very cool team. So they've been through some emotional turmoil. I'm not going to lie. We've seen it. We saw a load of rage about it. So if you haven't played Underworld for six months, um, a lot has changed. A lot changed in Blood Bowl 16. They got the Gutter Runner added. You did lose the other Blitzer and the other Thrower. So you've now got three linemen, a Gutter, a Thrower and a Blitzer walk into a bar no <laughs> but you get six skaven players still but now you only get one each of the positionals and three of the linemen so at first that was kind of like a bit of a nerf uh, the gutter didn't even have access to a mutation however with blood bowl 2020 landing the roster got changed even more uh, the gutter got corrected so now does have mutation access um, and the team is looking in a very very good spot because there's so much you can chop and change so let's talk through the key changes now the gutter runner so it got mutation uh, gutter runner went up a little bit of cash went up 5k its passing stat is a 4+, plus. obviously it used to be sending quick passes on a 2+, plus, but now a 4+, plus. but it's still got movement 9, still got dodge, still got all that great gutter runner stuff, and it is a skaven, so won't be affected by animosity from the thrower. The thrower went up 15k, which seems a bit much, however it's now passing 2+, plus. so it's essentially got its throwing agility boosted up to 4, so You've now got one of the best throwers in the game on this team and with the gutter runner, one of the best pass receivers, to be honest with you. Two plus catch and then a movement nine with dodge. Underworld got really fast, um, <laughs> but one of the other cool things they got is snotlings. So snotlings were released. We've got the snotling team. We have snotlings and um, the underworld team can take up to six of them and they do have mutation access. Uh, on general so their primary skills are agility mutation so you are going to end up with all kinds of ridiculous mutant snotlings and they still have the swarming rule so that is something that is worth considering when building underworld rosters they don't have the cheap line rule so you do have to pay the tv or uh, all <laughs> 15,000 of it so barely anything at all using swarming though you can get an extra d3 players a d3 snotlings onto the pitch at the start of every drive so having those snotlings so you can you can get three snotlings for 45k or one goblin for 40 dropping one goblin boosting up the amount of snotlings you've got means you're going to be able to gum up tackle zones with albeit tiny worthless players but it's just going to be able to pile on spread your defense and if you want to go for those fouls you've got the opportunity and and because they got even more hence all the hearts on the screen here they can take a rat ogre instead of a troll so we're going to look at a build for a troll a build for a rat ogre and because this team is overall quite cheap we've got a couple of interesting um inducement based builds for you as well First up, we've got the classic troll build. I say classic, however, this roster does have snotlings, um, but all other reasons, in all other ways, it kind of compares to the underworld roster of old. So you've got four goblins, three snotlings. That can be five goblins if you're not a fan of snotlings instead. But our list here, four goblins, three snotlings, three line rats, one blitzer, one gutter, one thrower, and the troll. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen players. Three of them are snotlings. So you're going to suffer in the long game. But this team comes with three rerolls and you start out with an apothecary. Now the reason I think the apothecary is so important for this roster is one blitzer, one thrower, one gutter. Um... You have no spares. They die, you have to pay for them. So you want them to stay alive as long as possible to get those level ups, to get the SPP and to simply just stay on the pitch because if you end up having a blitzer or a thrower um, taken out early on, you're going to struggle. So it, when the, the BB-16 roster was rebuilt, 
I played against Ben. He was running the old roster. I was running the Gutter World roster. And my Gutter just got taken out in the first few turns. I actually had a Goblin thrown at it, which was quite entertaining. But that was it. The Gutter was out. And I lost, I lost quite a lot of my team. So having that Apothecary to keep those players alive, even if it's not for that one game, even if it's for the rest of the season, is really going to benefit you, especially financially. Having the three Snotlings, so taking your 12th, 13th, 14th player build, means you can take advantage of swarming, probably for one, maybe two drives, depending on how much your team gets murdered. Um, but as you go on, you're going to get the cash. You start out with everything good here. You've got all your positionals, you've got the big guy, you've got three rerolls. Every bit of cash you get after this will be spent increasing your numbers by getting more Snotlings, maybe a Goblin, and eventually building up to the fourth reroll if you want it. Bear in mind, this team is at 14 players already, so you can only get two more players. I would probably take one more Goblin and one more Snotling at the most, because swarming is, is going to be useful for you. Even if it's just one extra Snotling on the pitch, you've got 12 players, they've got 11. That Snotling gets a cheeky foul. And then there's the Rat Ogre build. So the Rat Ogre is significantly more expensive than the Troll. 35k something like that and in this roster that's quite a few players so the rat ogre has a bit of a shuffle around in what you can take three goblins four snotlings so we've done a little bit of swip swap a -roo there to save the money to upgrade the troll to the rat ogre you've still got all the rats all three line rats and the three positionals you've still got the apothecary and you've still got those three re-rolls that you're going to need to be able to perform as a team the apothecary stays the same the reason we've got that there is to keep those other players alive with this roster, you've still got 3, 6, 10, 14 players, so you still have a reasonable bench, and you can use the swarming ability to get those snotlings onto the pitch. You've got 4, so you are slightly weaker. The other benefit of this, and I think this is something that cannot be understated, Rat Ogre no longer has Wild Animal. It has um, Animal Savagery which essentially works the same as Wild Animal, but if it fails, it has to punch a friendly player. If there's no friendly player, it loses its tackle zone, so it basically goes full bonehead. But if you've got a player that is cheap, that's extra on the pitch, that you simply don't care about, everybody, I'm, I'm hinting towards the Snotlings here, you chuck a Snotling, follow that Rat Ogre around, if it does lose its mind and punch it, you've lost a Snotling. A Snotling that was your 12th or 13th or 14th player on the pitch anyway, basically all you do is you get to use those swarming snotlings to make that rat ogre never fail an activation and you know if you're blitzing with him or blocking with him it's a two plus anyway so you're in a really good spot here this build is going to be aggressive you've got everything you want you've got extra players you've got spare foulers you've got a big guy who's raging and gets mutations um although mighty blur and clo doesn't stack the same way anymore um, and you've got a blitzer with block, you've got thrower who has got legitimately great passing game, and a gutter runner. It's, it's just a fantastic roster. And whether you want the troll to go the tentacles on the line route, or whether you want the rat ogre to just be your second blitzer who just goes and murders stuff, supported by an honorary snotling champion, you can do so much with this roster. You can drop an Apothecary, drop a Snotling, pick up that fourth reroll if you want to go that build. Uh, but personally, I think this is going to give you enough to play with. But the other cool thing about this team is that it is quite cheap. So if you drop a big guy, you save yourself 115 to 150k. You've got players and flexibility there to drop your inducement level down. So um, if you're looking at having a bit of a shift around what you can do is you can drop your tv and take hack phlegm so let's have a look at the tvs for these rosters so the troll build was 990 the rat ogre was 1000 so you've got no very very little spare cash in either of those builds this roster you take uh three goblins four snotlings three line rats and each of your positionals for skaven so that gives you three six nine thirteen players and it takes you with three re-rolls to 800 which should give you 200 in inducements now let's say you've got a couple spare um you can probably get this safely to 180 and 180 means that you can reliably use hack phlegm now hack phlegm is an absolute machine he's a strength three gutter runner so with this build you've got no big guy 
but you've got a ton of little guys, two gutter runners, one of them strength three. So this is like this weird underworld, no big guy build that could actually get you some wins because Hagflem is not to be sniffed at. We will look at the star players when we go through our star player spotlight series starting soon. And Hagflem is one of the ones I'm really excited about. The teams he can be taken in has expanded a lot. Um, and you're going to see him on the pitch quite regularly because 180k, he is an absolute bargain. And that takes your roster to 14 players, including the star. You've still got Snotlings for swarming and you've still got three rerolls. And Hackflem is the only player on the list with Lona. So this roster is not going to have the bash, but it is going to have a significant amount of dash. And I think it will be really good fun to play. And last but not least, it wouldn't be a starting rosters episode without us talking about Grack and crumbleberry so you can do exactly the same as we did with the previous roster uh you are looking at three goblins four snotlings you do have to drop a line rat so you're going to get two line rats one each of the positionals so what's that seven eight nine ten eleven twelve um and with three re-rolls that will put you at 750 that gives you 250k to play with which just happens to be the amount of Grack and Crumbleberry. So if you take Grack and Crumbleberry, uh, it will pop you to 14 players. It will pop you to a straight million. So you might struggle with this if they are under um, rostered. But by game two, by game three, if you've not over invested in extra players, you can you can take this build at a 1 million point. Um, and yeah, having Grack is going to be great. He's bonehead, sure, and he's loan of 4+, plus, but your big guys are kind of like that anyway. In fact, it's almost a bit of an upgrade. And he comes with a free strength to stunty player in Crumble Buns. And uh, 14 players, it's great. He's got kick teammate, which is slightly worse than throw teammate. But you've got an ogre instead. And eventually with this roster, you're kind of going to max out your players. If you max out at a 14, without purchasing additional rerolls, your team is kind of, there's a kind of a salary cap. So you are going to be able to have the troll and grack probably um at a reasonable tv amount and you should have a lot of fun with that with two blitzing big guys or just two throwing kicking big guys the grack build is definitely worth considering my favorite is the rat ogre build all day long and yes i know that's because i hate trolls i don't really hate trolls i just think the rat ogre is better this is not your underworld team of old this is an aggressive speedy can actually do stuff underworld team you've got numbers you've got speed you've got agility and you've got punch and you don't have to sacrifice on rerolls or apothecaries not only is this team a fantastic modeling challenge because you've got bits from three different teams you've got two big guys to choose from um, i think this is going to be a solid tier two team that's going to win games and i love the idea of this mix mash team delivering significantly and i think it's going to Anyway, let's wrap it up for Underworld starting rosters for now. Thank you very much for joining me. Drop some comments below uh, whether you like the rosters, whether you've got different rosters, and uh, what other team you would like to see next. But so many people clawed for Underworld. Uh, just had to move it to the top of the list. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you again soon.